get back on its feet. And if everyone in this nation would do what that verse said, we would be able to get back on the right path. Sure, we will definitely have to pay the consequences for the sins that we've been involved in as a nation over the years. But as always, remember this. God will forgive you of your sins, but you still have to pay the consequences. For example, when David had the affair with Bathsheba, he paid dearly for that. After he had Bathsheba's husband killed while serving on the front lines, and David and Bathsheba's baby wound up dying, one that they had when they were committing adultery. You know, God's wrath is your choice. Don't ever think that you're out of the reach of God and you're stronger than God, because He will definitely pour your wrath, His wrath, out on you if you don't do what He says and you reject Him if you don't obey his word, if you know him and have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Consider the story of Jonah when Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh to preach. You know, he instead went to Tarnish and he was swallowed up by that whale. He was thrown overboard from that ship because God sent down a storm and that got Jonah's attention. He was in that well for three days. That would be enough to get anybody's attention, I think. <laughs> After them three days, Jonah agreed to do what God said to do when that well spit Jonah up on the shore. And he went to Nineveh and preached. You know, traditionally, people have chosen God's wrath. You know, this morning we talked about Adam and Eve and how they you know, fell into the temptation of eating the forbidden fruit. Also, we consider Noah's generation. You know, Noah... You know, he went out and told people that disaster was coming, that he was making a way of escape and hard. You know, God told him to make it. You know the story about how him and all the other members of his family were saved, but all the earth drowned. And it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. You know, people didn't believe no until the flood came. And then they were wanting salvation, but it was too late. Also, you know, God's wrath in the future, what he's going to do to this world. We read about it in Revelation, where he'll pour out 21 judgments on this world in seven years after we've been raptured from this world. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. His final judgments on this world and everyone who's rejected him. Sadly, a lot of people don't want Christ in their lives anymore. They'd rather just do their own thing and not have a relationship with Christ. Jesus is the best person to have in your life. If you don't have him, you're already dead. The Bible says if you're lost and don't know Christ, that you are spiritually dead. Amen. And also, you know, there's only a few times when the Lord will call you. You know, he'll worship you. Everyone's had, a lot of people have had many opportunities to accept Christ, but they've rejected him. The Bible says in Genesis, the sixth chapter, that, you know, God says, My spirit will not always strive with men, meaning that if he keep rejecting Jesus, he will pull, you know, his spirit from you. You know, whenever you come in here and we get the invitation and you feel that tug in your heart, that means you need to do something. You can't come to Christ any time you want to. You've got to come when He calls you. You know, a lot of Christians now are not willing to serve Christ like they should. They're not in their Bibles, not praying, not in church. And, you know, something God wants us to be in church. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 10.25 for us not to forsake the gathering of ourselves Together. And, you know, sadly, a lot of people who claim to be Christians don't go to church. You know, what gets me is how a lot of people stay home from church and they're perfectly healthy and everything, but yet there are these ones that want to be in church, but they're too sick and everything to go. That's upsetting. Honestly, all these churches could be full. You know, there's more people on the church roads than what actually show up. Yeah. More people have their name on the church road than they do on the road up yonder. 
Yeah. You know, when the Romans call up yonder, you know, we sing that old hymn. Will he be there whenever the Romans call up yonder? His church membership won't save you. Nope. It won't save you at all. Only Jesus Christ and his precious blood can save you. Amen. Muhammad cannot save you. Buddha cannot save you. The Virgin Mary cannot save you. Your knowledge can't save you. I've had many professors where I go to college at UALR, some of them were intellectuals who reject Christ and don't want really nothing to do with him. Whenever they teach about Christianity, they just tear him down. They don't realize what they're doing. And, you know, a while back, you know, there was that story in the news about how that professor down in Florida at that college had his students write Jesus' name on a paper and had him stomp on it. And luckily, some people were brave enough not to do it. They Amen. were kicked out of the university, but they were able to get it out in the media and everything. Once the media got involved, the university straightened up pretty quickly. Amen. See, that's the thing. When people are confronted about their sins and everything, they'll do everything to try and stay out of trouble and hide it and everything. But, you know, the Bible says that your sin will find you out. Now, you know, what's done in the dark will be brought to the light. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 1, Blessed is the man who doesn't dwell in the counsel of the ungodly. You know, if you're a Christian, you don't need to be hanging around all the people that you used to hang out with, like drinking buddies and stuff like that. You need to be around good Christian people. You know, the Bible also says in 2 Corinthians 6.14, not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It's not just talking about dating, it's also talking about the people that you surround yourself with. Because the people you surround yourself with, you'll eventually be like them and do a lot of things that they do. So you need to be around people who practice good habits, who are strong in the faith. Amen. We're supposed to lift each other up, not tear each other down. Sadly, a lot of Christians get hurt by so-called other Christians. You know, it's sad, you know, the Bible says, you know, the devil is a wolf in sheep's clothing, and he'll come in churches and try to cause to stir up trouble. That way the church will shut down or split up. We see that a lot now, where, you know, a lot of churches where one side of the church won't talk to the other side. The Holy Spirit ain't in those churches. God's not, not present in those churches where there is discord. He wants everyone to be in one accord. Amen supposed to get along with each other. You know, the Bible says, you know, when two or three are gathered together, you know, we pray, come in agreement, it's in one accord, that, you know, he'll hear and everything. You know, and you don't have to be in a church if you don't have church, but you can have church anywhere. You know, the Bible says that two or three people are more gathered in my name, there will I be also. You can have church out here in a field, you can have church in here, in a tent, it's wherever. But you need to be in church every week. You need to be in Sunday school as well, studying the Lord. That's where you get equipped. You know, we were talking about this morning, you know, putting on the whole armor of God. You know, in Ephesians 6, it talks about the sword, you know, which is the word of God. We've got to keep that sword sharpened. Amen. That way when we go out here and witness to people, you know, we'll know what to say. And we have to let the Lord lead. A lot of times we don't let the Lord lead. We get ahead too ahead of ourselves. We take our eyes off him, like Peter on the Sea of Galilee. He was doing just fine walking on the water when he kept his eye on Jesus. But when he turned his eye away from Jesus, he fell. He was yeah. drowning. Yeah. The Lord brought him back up. And he'll bring you back up, too, if you're in the midst of a storm. You know, soon trials and troubles will pass. They won't last forever. You know, the Bible says that, you know, we get to heaven... There will be no more pain, no more crying, no more suffering. One day there will be a new heaven and a new earth, you know, Revelation 21. But if you reject Jesus, you won't be able to have more in that. You'll wind up in the lake of fire forever and ever. You know, the devil, he comes as an angel of light. You know, he was a, a very bright angel in heaven, you know, Lucifer. You know, he's, you know, did all the music stuff. That's why Satan's very good at slipping lines into music and everything, like in a lot of this rock music and 
all this other occultic music. And, you know, if you're listening to all that, you need to get that junk out of your house. Because right. demons invade your life through stuff like that. And, you know, the devil and demons, they believe in Jesus. They just don't obey him. The Bible says you know, in James that demons tremble when they hear the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, we have to obey. It's not just enough to believe in him, you know, but we've also got to obey him. You know. We have to obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen. You know, I hope that all of you have made the choice to follow Christ. You know, if you haven't done so, today is the day to do it. You know, we're running out of time. Jesus is coming back soon, like I said this morning. Do you want to be left behind to go through the tribulation? I know I don't. I'm very thankful that I won't be left behind because I've accepted brother. Jesus' is free gift of salvation. Yeah. It's going to be a whole new ball game after the rapture happens whenever the Antichrist makes his appearance. Do you think things are bad right now on planet Earth? It will be ten times worse. What will it be? Jesus or the devil? There's no middle ground, like I said this morning. There's no purgatory. There's no holding tank after you die. You'll either go to heaven or to hell. You know, the Bible says in John 14, talks about in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'd go and prepare a place for you. And if I come again, if I come, go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you. For where I am, you may be also. So you see, when you go to heaven, you accepted Christ, you've got a mansion waiting for you in heaven. It'll be far greater than all these beautiful mansions I believe down here on earth. That they, the mansions up there, they don't have no problems like with termites or things getting old and rusted or you know, rotting away. Yep. It lasts forever. You know, the Apostle Paul said that this world's a dummy compared to what heaven is. You know, the Apostle Paul, he was given a guided tour of heaven. You know, John the Revelator also saw a lot of heaven too, you know, when he's writing down the Revelation. He's actually in the throne room with God. And it's definitely far greater than this world is. There's no darkness. You know, the Lord's the light. Amen. The streets of pure gold, pearly gates, they have all different kinds of different jewels and stones. Got the river of life. I hope that all of you make the choice to follow Christ so you can enjoy heaven. Sadly, there's a lot of people who are deceived and who are seen about a heaven they'll never see. You know, the Bible says, like I said this morning in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, that the road to hell is broad and many find it. And the road to heaven is narrow, few find it. And also, Jesus says in John and uh, Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23, that not everyone who saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. And it also goes on to say that many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done many wonderful words in your name and thy name have cast out devils and Jesus goes on to say that he will profess unto them depart from me you worker of iniquity for I never knew you yeah. you'll either hear one you'll hear one of two things whenever you pass away and you stand before God you'll either hear well done thou been a faithful servant or depart from me I never knew you what a sad day that will be for those people who have to hear those sad words depart I never knew you I couldn't imagine spending eternity without God in the lake of fire and hell where you're tortured forever, where you're infested with worms, where demons and other monsters claw at you. You know, the Bible talks about the rich young ruler in Luke 16. You know, he was a very rich person. He had everything that the world could offer, but in the end he wound up going to hell. The uh, Bible says in Mark 8, 36, that whosoever shall, who shall ever profit, what shall profit a man if he gains the world but loses his own soul? You know, there's a lot of rich people who have it all in this world, but they're lost. And 
they'll wind up in hell if they don't repent and accept Christ. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 19, 20, 21, lay up for yourself, you know, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust corrupt and where thieves break in and steal. But instead, store for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. A lot of people's treasure is here on this earth. It goes to show you that their heart is not in heaven. That they don't have their priorities in order. You should be tithing at least 10% of your income, giving it to the Lord. However, you know, much you get paid, you get 10% to the Lord. That's what he expects of us. He wants it to give you, wants it to be given to the church where you're fed the work. Then after that, if you want to give offerings to other ministries, feel free to do so. Do so. Whenever you tithe and you give offerings, the Lord will bless you for that. Amen. In a mighty way. He'll protect you from harm. He'll give you houses you didn't build, vineyards you didn't plant, wells you didn't dig, all the above. You know, heaven, windows of blessings will be poured out if you do what God says. You know, you may not be the richest person in the world, but hey, you have it pretty well off if you just do what God says. Amen. You know, God hates sin, and He's going to judge sin. You know, every murderer, every liar, every adulteress, every homosexual, and the list goes on will stand before God. Every atheist, every agnostic, they will all bow before God. You know, Philippians chapter 2, 10, 11, it says, On that final day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everybody will bow. There's no exceptions. You know, you'll either bow today or you'll bow tomorrow. Yeah. So what's it going to be? Christ or the devil. Heaven or hell. The choice is yours. I can't make the choice for you. Only you can make that choice. Is God speaking to you tonight? Make things right with Him. If God's leading you into a ministry, go ahead and answer the call because He won't leave you alone until you do. Amen. What's it going to be? I'm going to ask our song leader everyone to come up as we have our hymn of invitation.